Welcome back to the Pittsburgh Pirates franchise here. We're through one month. It is May 1st, and we are 19 and 12, a game out of first place behind the Reds. You see our rank 24th team, contact 23. Power, we're ninth, and speed, we're seventh. So we got some speed there. We got to improve the defense and pitching and contact overall. The whole team's going to need to improve. We're on a hot start. Something tells me that's uh, that's not going to last. But let's look at how our, our lineup is right now. We might make some adjustments here. O'Neal Cruz, he's playing pretty good when he has a, a, a chance to bat. So 57 at bats so far. I believe that's only 15 games. His overall is going up. Would like to see the left-hand stuff, uh, contact against left-handed pitchers go up more. It's gone up one. So there is a chance. There is a chance that we can play him from both sides of the plate, or he bats left-handed, but facing both uh, right-handed and left-handed pitchers. Uh, McCutcheon's doing pretty good too. 349 so far. He's playing every day. Don't let the regression fool you. He's, he's playing pretty good. I don't know if he's going to maintain this all season but as of right now we're, we're not we're not able to take him out of the lineup brian reynolds is off to a hot start nine home runs 21 rbis batting 314 can't ask for much more from from your star player your three three hole batter the newcomer jd martinez with a hot start after a handful of games 34 plate appearances in eight games he's batting 324 with two home runs seven rbis first like question mark here is this gonna be the normal Okay, Brian Hayes, like, are, are we seeing what we're going to get from him with the contact being 70 against right-handers and 84 against left-handers? You would hope that we would get a little more production out of him, but we'll see. Rondal, this is probably the first move we're going to make today. I think it is time to go ahead and let Henry Davis hop into the lineup as our everyday catcher. Rondal, you're going to have to be a backup for the rest of the year, and that's, that's the only year that we have him under contract so we'll probably have him walk after this but welcome to the full-time starting lineup henry davis connor joe 253 not as impressive as i was hoping he is starting to decline a little bit in his attributes as well we do have him under contract or control through 2027 that's an interesting one bay 261 can't really complain about his performance so far batting eighth can't ask for much more than the 330 on base percentage. How is he doing in the field? No errors. He's he's doing great. He's doing great. And then we get down to our our only player batting below 200. And I I'm just really debating making this move as well. And I I think it is time. We're gonna have Oliveris be our full time starting center fielder. And we're gonna have to see what happens with. Sawinski. He's got options. Do we let him develop a little bit more? He is 25. It's, I just, we can't, we can't have him in the lineup every day. That's going to be a problem, but we're going to adjust this a little bit. I think we'll move Henry down to, we'll put him eighth. We'll put Bay ninth. And then Oliveris, do we put him above Hayes at this point? Yeah, we'll put them just like that. I think, gosh, that's a solid starting first six in the lineup here. Connor Joe, do we give Telez a shot or do we let Joe continue playing first base for a little bit? I'm leaning towards leaving him in against right-handed pitching, but uh, I think we got to do this. I think we got to put Telez against right-handed and then we'll put Joe against against left-handed. Let's go take a look at the left-handed lineup now. We're going to keep Hayes up here. McCutcheon the same through. Yeah, we're going to leave it the same here. This is where it really changes. Like... What is his alt? He could play second base or third base, Pagrero here. He's starting out hot. He's played 20 a game, 65 at bats, 10 RBIs. He strikes out a little bit, but I, I just, I feel like we got to get him on the field more. So is he, does he play over Bay for a while? Oh, I don't know, but are we ready to put Cruz in against left-handers? I'm not sure. I think we just go with this as is right here. Put Joe at the, yeah, let's, let's swap this. Joe is a little bit better against left-handed pitchers. Yeah, I think we go with that for now. Then taking a look at the pitching rotation here, Keller's off to a hot start. 5-1, 2.31 ERA. Ovedo, even hotter start, 1.95 ERA. Gonzalez, 4.04. Can't really complain about that for what he, what he is. Kept him under contract through 2025, so he's kind of bridging the gap until Skeens and, and Jones get here. Uh, Holderman here is where it starts to really struggle. He's a C overall. He's not going to hit 
the 70s, I don't believe overall wise. 547 ERA. And then we have Falter here, who's two for two and two. 22 strikeouts, 4.72 ERA. We could live with that, but gosh, I think it's time to make a move. And I think we lean towards keeping the left-hander in the rotation. Taking a look at Holderman's options. I think that's what we're going to do today. Let's go to the roster here. We got to make sure. I don't know if he's, if Skeens is even on the 40 man. He is not. So we're going to have to make a move on the 40 man to begin with if we're going to bring Skeens up for the rest of the year here. So let's take a look. This player here, Nicholas, has, yeah, he, he, well, it's, oh man, you remove him from the 40 man and they go on waivers, right? If you remove Kyle Nicholas from the 40 man, he'll be passed through waivers. Yeah, I, we got to do it. Not a huge risk to lose him. Now we'll go back to our starting pitching here and we can get him added to the 40 man and we're going to promote, we're going to promote him to the majors. We do have two on the injured list, but we need to go here. And now we're going to pick, which one did we say was not Falter? He's a relief pitcher. Why is he starting? How did that even happen? No wonder he's struggling. Perez was supposed to be the starter, but he's pitching a little bit better. So yeah, Holderman's the one who's gonna come down then. We messed that up a little bit. And let's look at his options. We did check that already. Yeah, he's he's got options. So he'll move to class Oh, not class A. We want to move him to triple A. And then, yeah, and then we'll head back over here and that should do it. We have 28 men, two on the injured list and gosh, welcome to the big leagues. 73 overall, because we did make that adjustment on the velocity. He's here. Paul Skeens is here. When will he be pitching? Let's look at the calendar. Alvedo, Gonzalez. Oh, I guess we have to put him in the rotation, don't we? And we will just slot him in at the four here. And then looking at the calendar, I think it's Saturday against Kyle Fre Freeland. Uh, I think it's time to, to get to that date. But let's look at our other Jared Jones. He's off to somewhat of a cold start, it looks like, or he's on a cold streak, but he is increasing a hair. He's up to 68 overall. 308 ERA so far. Not too bad, not too bad. We'll see. He's going to develop a little bit more, but we will see him in the big leagues before too long. All right, let's see. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Jared Triola is eligible to be reinstated. We're gonna activate him, but that means we gotta make a move. We gotta make a move. We have 27 active. Let's go to our major league roster here. So it was a infielder, right? So let's go that way. Let's go that route. Just kind of show what I usually do at the beginning of seasons is I'll come in here. We have three catchers, but one's on the injured list, so that's okay. First baseman, we. We have Joe as the backup. Triolo could, does he have, he has options. We could send him down. He was batting 180 when he got hurt with 50 at bats. I, you know, honestly, I think that might be the right move for now. And we'll go ahead and go to those lineups though and make sure that gives us too many in triple A. So we got to sort some other things out here. That should be fine. We should have two third basemen, but It'll be okay. And this was a nine to one loss here. Who pitched for us? Avedo pitched for us, gave up five runs. We got spanked and not much offense. Go ahead and simulate this game one to one in the sixth inning. We'll simulate to the end here. The Rockies beat us 10 to one. So something's, something's amiss, but the time has come. Paul Skeens makes his major league debut momentarily there is one other roster move that i wanted to take a look at and i got a couple comments about michael a taylor and this could be you know a, he's 33 i don't know how big of a contract let's see if we can find that and try to match that contract that the pirates actually signed him to so it looks like it was a one-year contract for four million dollars so kind of matching what we're seeing here we're gonna do four million roster is full so we'll go ahead and we're gonna have to do a couple more moves here so we'll go to the roster the full roster at the bottom here 32 year old ben heller uh we are going to uh wave you we're gonna release you and that will open up a roster spot and now let's see if we can pull this similar deal off here one year four million dollars platoon yep and he's not super interested add a few more years and we'll work it out uh we will not be doing that let's go up to 4.5 
I'd like a longer contract. Well, you took a one year contract. Uh, maybe we'll give him a two year contract with a club option that is worth $8 million. I think we need to get it in the green for him to accept it. We will go to 10 and give him an extra million each year. Or let's see, let's play with this a little bit. 9.1, increase the salary, okay. Salary's too low. 10's the most I'm going. I tried. I really don't want to bank a bunch of money in him. We gave it a shot. Here we go. The 19 and 14 Pittsburgh Pirates face off against the 15 and 17 Colorado Rockies. There he is, making his major league debut. Paul Skeens. Look at the stash. Gotta love it. There's this AAA stats. Not too bad in six starts. We'll take it. Welcome to the big leagues, bud. What a perfect scenario for a rookie. Get to start his first game with his club at home. I want to see this fastball. Let's see what Charlie Blackman can do. He gets a hold of it. Base hit on the first pitch. 98 mile an hour fastball. Okay. See how this changeup works against major leaguers. Little bit of control issues from what I remember. Um, this is bad. One nothing, no outs. The skeins is starting off slow. I'm a little distracted by some poppy audio. I'm hoping that's not the case for the recording. I apologize if there is some popping in the recording. We'll figure out how to get that fixed next time. But let's focus on this. Uh, Nolan Jones is up to bat. We got to retire somebody, right? This could be a complete disaster. That's a nice change up. Now, not everything's going to be a perfect Cinderella story in this playthrough, as we're learning already. We do get one out here. Oh, barely. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I didn't think he was going to get to it for a second. Oliveris, thank you. We got one out. Let's see if he can settle in here. Pitch on the inside here. Fastball. Just not completely hitting his locations. But he's getting them to pop out now. Not too bad. We got two outs. Let's see if we can get out of this with only one run. And we got a rookie here. Romo. It's either... Hasn't gotten a hit since he's been called up or added to the lineup, or this is... Oh, there we go. 0-2 last game, so we know he's played at least one game prior to this. 2-0 count. Skeens is just missing the corners on these. Just can't locate completely. Chris Bryant up next. ruh -roh. And a three-pitch walk. I think he's nervous. I think he's nervous. And now we got runners at first and second, two outs, and Chris Bryant is up. Five straight balls. Ooh. Got to build this confidence. Got to build your confidence, Skeen. Skeens. All right, we got a strike there. And that'll get us out of the inning. Okay, only one run. We'll walk, two hits. Could have been better. Could have been worse. Hopefully the offense can help us out. Facing off Kyle Freeland. Let's see how it goes. Still one nothing. I think we got the popping fix. I didn't mean to, to just freak out there on the pitch clock, but here we go. Back at it. 1-1 one, one count. Top of the second. One hop to bay. Over to Joe for the out. One out in the top of the second. There's a fly ball. Will he get to it? McCutcheon out there? Yes. Got to it. Way to run it down, McCutcheon. He's got to place the fastball better. Otherwise, it's not going to be effective. There's a base hit. That one just, just a little bit low, and I'm terrified to like start up here. But that seems to be the key for him as we end the second inning with only one hit. All right, one nothing still. Come on, offense. Got to get the offense rolling. Still one nothing. Rogers is up. 
Fastball incoming. All right, see, the ump's not helping us there. That's a strike. Let's see if we can get this changeup going. Again, just the control is not there yet for the youngster. Now, this move's only going to work if he performs better than who he replaced, and the bar is at about a 5 ERA. So, I mean, right now I have confidence that he's going to be okay. Let's see if we can blow away with a fastball here. There we go. There's a strikeout. About time. First major league strikeout. Hopefully that's one of many to come. All right. Nolan Jones is up now. Just low. Oh. Confidence seems to be growing a little bit as we go into this game. Foul ball. 1-1. One And I am trying a little bit different here. We've been going back and forth with the recording styles as we ground out to the shortstop for two outs in the third. And I am recording voice while playing this time around. It's been kind of a struggle trying to figure out how to pull this off and make it as well quality as it is when I do voiceovers. I think this is the best way to do it for efficiency and live reactions. So we'll get better as it is. It, we'll get see we stumble. We'll get better at it as we go and one thing you'll learn about me is you stick, if you stick around with this channel long term, as another nice strikeout blew it by him. I'm very transparent. I'm going to share a lot with you that others probably don't. You're going to know a lot that's going on behind the scenes. We only have one hit through two. Come on, offense. You don't want to get a one nothing loss if we hold on to just giving up one run. Confidence bar is growing. Let's see if the changeup is going to get located better now. Well, he swung at it. All right, we got him chasing. Let's see if we can turn this slider into a strikeout pitch. Foul ball. 0 2 count again. There's a strikeout looking on a cutter. Ooh, that was, that was located pretty well. Pretty well. Gabriel Moreno is on a 2-for-24 streak. Ooh, that's not good. All right, one out here in the fourth. Skeens has calmed down since those first two batters. A little pop out here. That'll help the pitch count. Two down in the fourth. Oh, that's low. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. 1-0 -oh count. Bouchard. I think I said Bacard last time. It is Bouchard. There's a changeup that he swings at. See, the, the, the control will work if we can get him to swing like that. One, two count. Try to get on the inside corner with this slider. Oh, that came way too far into the center of the plate. That's, that's not where we wanted it. Another two out hit for the, for the Rockies. Get this cutter going. A little low. That's a nicely located fastball. All right, let's drop a change up here. Yeah, he's throwing the change up much better now. That'll get us through four, down one. Ball one to Montero to start off the fifth inning. Yeah, there's a cutter for a ground ball. I love that. Beautiful. Here's Blackman. Ball one. Let's see if we can get the heat by him. He caught up to it early, but that's that's what we like to see. Pop outs. He might be, you know, a pop out pitcher in the major leagues for a little bit. Where he was getting a lot of strikeouts in triple A. There's a hard hit line drive to center field that's gonna get down another two out base hit for the Rockies. I think that's four innings in a row. Can't get the one, two, three inning. The rookie is, he's doing good though. He's doing good. He's calmed down nice. It's a change up coming in. Line drive to Bay, gets us through five. Still no run support for Skeens. Hope this isn't a trend for his career. You know, over the years, there's been certain pitchers that are pretty decent and then their offense just struggles for them. So their losses, they look like they have more, lo or they have more losses than they should if they had a better offensive team to back them up. 
Let's hope Skeens' career doesn't go down that path. All right, let's see. Can the changeup get a strike out here? It did. It did. That's not where we wanted it, but it worked. There's Romo again, still looking for his first hit of the year. And that's low. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. 62 pitches so far. We'll see how far he goes in this game. Nice play there by Hayes. All right, two outs. Let's see if we can get a 1-2-3 inning. Ball uh, inside. 2016 was when he was MVP. Man, time flies. There's a pop out. Can we get to it, though? McCutcheon runs it down. That'll get us through six innings with only one run given up. Come on, offense. Come on, offense. And we've lost audio. We've lost game audio. Oh, the technical difficulties. That's a line drive to right field. That's probably going to get down in its foul. Oh. All right, let's see if we can fix the audio. Let's try to get this on the outside corner. Strike. Come on. Oh, they threw it right in the middle. Skeens. Ooh, calm down, bud. Lucky that didn't get clobbered. 0-2 pitch coming up. Let's try this change up again. Strike three. Five strikeouts. Not bad. Not bad. Pitch number 70 coming in here. Oof. Only 97 now. He was hitting 98 early on. That's a nice slider. The confidence has grown. Oh, two pitch, just low. He didn't bite. He didn't bite. Let's see if we can get him to bite on the slider again. Ground out to Bay. If he gets there, he does. And a nice play to first. Two down. Just cruising now. Ball one. Now, this is kind of what we saw in his start in AAA that we did. He started to lose his control big time late in the outing. Let's see if we can locate the fastball. And it's in the zone, a little higher than we wanted it. Let's try to end this with the cutter here. Get us through seven. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, the location is just struggling a little bit. Still can't complain though. He's only given up one run in his first start. That's a nice slider. That'll end the seventh, top of the seventh. Six strikeouts. Skeen's looking good. And that'll do it for Skeen. Seven, one run, six strikeouts. Oh, so sad. We are going to enter the game. And we're going to go team select, and we're going to watch. We'll let the team play it out as they would. We're in the ninth inning. Not sure how that happened. Bottom of the ninth. one nothing game. Runner on second, and that's a base hit to tie the game. All right. Way to go, Pirates. Skeens will not get a loss in his first start. Pagrero with a nice base hit to tie the game. And Connor Joe... Be the hero here and end the game with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. 258 on the year, two home runs, eight RBIs. Got a runner on first. Keep it going, Connor. Strike one. Rocky's got a couple right-handers warming up in the bullpen. Looks like a lefty, but it says right on the screen. I don't know what's happening there. Justin Lawrence ready to deliver. 0 0-1 oh, pitch. Yeah, oh, Joe, you shouldn't have swung at that. Might be going to extra innings here, but Skeens is not on the hook for the loss anymore. Oh, uh, one, two pitch, strike three, going to 10. So it looks like the simulated situations or whatever it's called kicked in, and that's why we got straight to the ninth, but it should be the 10th inning now. Extra inning rules in play. They'll start with the runner on second. Perez in the pitch. 1 0 pitch is drilled. Is Reynolds going to get back to it? Oh, why did he... S his first step was in. Reynolds, what were you doing there? Two to one. 
Oh, that's heartbreaking right there. Team is sliding. We are sliding. Blackman is up now. He's one for four today. Strike one. Got to get out of this with uh, minimal damage so you can try to tie it up in the 10th. Perez to deliver the 0-1 pitch. Foul ball. 0-2. Ball one. One and two counts. Let's go, Perez. That's in the dirt. Is the runner going to try to advance? He does not. 2-2 two, two counts. Runner at second. No outs. And that's going to get through. It does not bait. Does get a hold of it there at second base. Get one out, but the runner does advance to third. Sack fly scores another run. Got to get a strike out here or a ball on the ground. Or a shallow fly ball to the outfield. Strike one. Oh, one counts. Perez to deliver his 10th pitch of the outing. And it is a ground ball. Davis handles it. Two down. Ooh, I didn't think he was going to get there in time. That's what we needed right there. Nolan Jones is up. He's 0 for 4 today. Pretty good start to the year. He's batting 282 with four home runs and 16 RBIs. All right, Perez, get out of this jam here. Ooh, got him with that circle change. Look like me batting. Way ahead of it. 0-1 count. There's a nice curveball. 0-2, let's get out of this. Got out of this with a chance to tie in the bottom of the 10th. Come on. 0-2 pitch. Fly ball to center field. Oliveris is charging in on it, and he's got it. Let's go to the bottom of the 10th. Rally time, guys. Noel Davis is one for seven on the series, 0 for three today. He's got a runner at second. Just got to advance him. Strike one. Oh, ball one. We'll take it. So he's down to 200 with runners in scoring position this year. We got him in the eight hole. Might be why, but he might develop good. That's going to advance the runner. That's what we needed. Well done, Davis. One out, runner at third. We need a sack fly here, base hit, something to get that run home. Nick Gonzalez is going to be a pinch runner. All right, coach. A little bit more speed at third than we had. Pitch incoming, and it is low. 1-0. Look at Bay, 333 with runners in scoring position this year. I like that. 1-0 count. And that is not the type of fly ball we needed. Oh, no. It's going to come down to O'Neal Cruz with two outs. Now Third base. Oh, yeah. oh, is it O'Neal? I thought it was O'Neal. O'Neal Cruz? Batting 3 311 for the year. This is the type of matchup we like him in, though, against a right handed pitcher. Ball one. And he's on a nine-game hitting streak. Looks like this is his first at-bat of the game, too, so that could end his hitting streak if he doesn't get a base hit here. 1-1 one, one count. The sidearm Lawrence to pitch his 12th pitch of the outing, and that is strike two. One and two. Crowd's getting a little restless. Pitch incoming. Foul ball. One, two count again. See if Cruz can be the hero today. Let's learn about his clutch ability and he strikes out. Well, Skeens gets a no decision in a pretty entertaining game there at the end. Two to one, the Rockies beat us. It's too bad, you'd like to see your young guy get a win in his first start, but it's the way the cookie crumbles. Now, if we take a look at this, that's 0-3 uh, to start May with a loss on the 30th of April as well. It's a four-game losing streak, and let's advance the day here. we got scouts opened up for us. That puts us two games behind. We're 19 and 15 and trending in the wrong direction. So we're going to do a little different here. It was probably, oh, the wrong time of the year to do this, but we're going to adjust how we're how we're doing our scouting. We're going to find the, we're going to work on discovery. Basically, we're going to, we're going to try to find the best scout that can discover 
for a low amount of money. Billy Walsh is there, gonna replace that scout. Then we're gonna come in here. We have $14,000 left. Efficiency would be nice to improve. We have a good one here, 97 efficiency. Pretty good balance between position players. So let's see what else we can find with our $14,000 as we work our way up. We're looking at efficiency first, and then we're looking for pretty good on pitching is what I'm hoping. And this is something that's gonna be kind of an experiment this season because we started late, but if this works pretty good, we'll definitely roll it out full blown next season. Got this from Fiend Franchise, pretty good strategy. If you're not aware of him, go check him out. But I don't know if we're gonna have anything good here. Well, let's see, 84 for pitching, I'd like it a little higher. Might be the best. That improves our, our current scouting on pitching with this guy and efficiency. And that gives us 7,000 more. What's the very top here? 91 efficiency, not as high as what we have, but he's really good at pitchers. Got down here, 82 with the 97 position players. A little less money here, 93 and 89 with position players. And let's see what see what we got here with Curtis Reeves, the catcher. We, MLB ranking is 84. For us, he's 128 now. We're really focusing on these present stats. He is a four-year senior. He's not going to be very good, even if he's at the best of his present stats. Fielding, he might be pretty good. Speed's not good. Stealing is good though, which is kind of strange. Reaction, pretty good. Somebody we're not, we're not really interested in. We'll cancel that. We'll start here with our pitching scout, 87, yeah. And we're gonna go through some of these starters that we are interested in. We have everything on Oswald. Actually, no, we're gonna focus on position players. Let's grab the position player scout. I messed that up already. That's gonna be... Radrick. And let's go to recommended prospects and get this to all. And just to recap here, we do feel very confident in Shane Castillo. If he's around when we get to draft, we are, we're set right there. Now here's a third baseman who looks interesting. He is 18 years old. 43 to 77 is a little rough on his overall, but if we look at his present stats, this could be a future DH. Fielding looks like it's not very good, but he potentially has great contact and pretty good power. I wanna go ahead and scout Franz here. We're gonna go here for our pitching scout. We're gonna scout position and we are gonna go starting pitcher international. And then with our discovery scout, we are gonna discover pitchers international. And we're gonna give that a shot for the rest of this season and most likely use it all next season. All right, we end up the series with the Rockies with an 8-2 win. And I think what we're going to do is end this this episode with a couple of these important situations. We're going to jump in here with a 1-0 lead in the eighth inning with Chapman on the mound. All right, it was, it was a one-run lead. It's 3-4. I thought it was 1-0 there. But we are in the top of the eighth. Let's see if we can hold on to this. Go ahead and look at our bullpen here, and we will get our closer warming up. Bednar and see if Chapman can get through this inning as our setup man. Cabrera over to catch the fly ball here. One down. Chapman has fallen behind Ward here. 2 0 pitch. 100 miles an hour. It's 2 to 1. 2 and 1. And that hit him. That hit him. The Angels have a base runner. Now let's look for a ground ball double play to end the inning. That's not going to do it. And that is a blown save. Or a blown hold. Four to four. Woo, Chapman. 102 miles an hour there. Talked last episode about possibly changing the settings, and I thought about it a little bit, and I feel like we just need to play through and just see how it's going, because right now you can see things are are not going our way completely. So it's starting to look like it's supposed to. So I think I do have my settings set pretty good for my skill set on the game. If we keep overperforming, which it seems like we're stabilizing, but if we keep overperforming, we will make some adjustments. 1-1 nope. one, one count. One out still. Chapman just hitting the middle of the plate there, not scared. Let's throw the two seam here. Foul ball. Struck him out. Two outs in the eighth inning. 
Tie ball game. Go to pitch. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. I accidentally pitched the button too fast. That didn't work good. Brian Reynolds up to bat here in the bottom of the eighth. One for three on the game. Swinging at a terrible pitch. I haven't bat in a few days. Let's see how this goes. Let's go to the bullpen. Make sure we get a couple guys going there because I don't know if we want to go to Bednar if we're not winning. Oh, two count. Ground ball to second base. One down. And Zawinski's in the game. One for three today, batting fifth. Let's do a power swing. I haven't done, I don't do that very often. Most of the time I just do normal swings. Let's try a power swing here. And he swings through it. I don't feel like we're that early. That feels weird. And trying for contact now that it's 0-2. And, and way out in front of the slider. Yep, yep. I think we have the settings right. This Monty Grandal is 0-3 today. A little ahead of the sinker. There's a foul ball to first. 0-2 counts. Two outs. Ground ball to second base. That'll end the eighth. Moretta comes into the game for Chapman here to start the ninth inning. Foul ball. Let's try the circle change here. It's a little low. A little low. I'm surprised Rendon's playing today. It's not his off day. He gets like three days off a week, right? Foul ball. Two and two. Nice to see one of our relievers that we haven't featured yet so to get a kind of feel for him kind of like his stuff he's got good movement his control doesn't seem to be that far off and you know the settings that i use is is basically the players are determining based on their skill set it is not based on me having good timing on pressing it and so i i locate where i want the pitch to go and based on their skill set and their confidence and all the things in the game it determines where the pitch ends up as we're one down in the ninth and the scary Mike Trout comes up. And that's not where you want to locate a pitch. Good thing he's looking at that first pitch. Circle change here. Inside. One and one. Let's try this slider. See if we can keep it in the zone. And that was a little too much of the zone there. But it fly out to right field. Two down. 1-0 -oh count. Foul ball. 1-1. One, one. Oh, that almost hit the pitcher. Base hit. It's another two-out base hit given up in this episode. Woo. There's a, there we go. He swung through it. He swung through it. He chased it a little bit. It should have been a 3-0 count. Uh-oh. It did not sound like he got all of it, but he got all of it. Hit his 6-4 Los Angeles. Well, we're down two now here in the ninth inning. And our uh, quick descent to Earth has uh, is, is upon us, making the move for J.D. Martinez and moving Skeens up. Seemed like it might have been not worth it. And that'll take us to the bottom of the ninth, down two runs. Let's see if we can come back. Connor Joe leading off. Bottom of the lineup here. Let's call timeout. Nope, nope, couldn't do it in time. Just gonna see who we have on the bench. Let's actually, let's take a look at this. We've got Cruz, McCutcheon, Davis, Telez, Oliveris. So we played a lot of bench players today, it looks like. Got a lefty on the mound, we'll keep that in mind. Strike three, one down. That's a ground ball to second base. He fields it cleanly, throws him out at first. The Bucks are down to their last out. He's 0 for 2 today. I think he was 1 for 13 on the season. Which probably should have brought up a right-handed pinch hitter for him, but we failed at that. Six four Angels, two outs, 0-2 oh, count, bottom of the ninth. One-two, balls outside. 
so we can get a last minute rally going here. Not a chance. Angels win. So after the hot start in April, we have started May 1 and 4. And the Angels beat us 2-1 to one on the next day. And the Angels go for the sweep here. And we get a win. 6-4. to four. Now we're to Paul Skeen's second start. Let's see how that goes. It is a loss. Let's look at the box score here. That's Chicago down here. He went five innings, gave up four runs, four hits, two walks. Let's look at the Cubs here. No home runs though, but that's that's a rough start for him. We're now 21 and 18, and we lose again. So we've now started the month of May two and let's see, seven, two and seven for the month. We're at 21 and 19 all of a sudden. Let's go see. So we've discovered four players. So what do we have here? So Franz here is starting to get narrowed in. Good. We need to do some more scouting on him. Third base and can play first. We we're looking for a first baseman. So his secondary position, that's kind of nice there. 18 years old. Yeah, if he's on the high end of his present stats, he's going to be a stud. So let's keep let's keep the scouting going. Let's view the prospects. Let's view recently scouted. Ooh, Manuel Hernandez. This is why we're discovering right here. Manuel Hernandez. There's only a nine gap between his overall and his potential. Interesting. Not great with strikeouts, really good with walks. That's what we like to see. Let's see if there's any more that we discovered that are just huge. Here's one, Philip Tejeda was not ranked and now he's 68th, 35% scouted. Not as good as Hernandez, but that's pretty exciting. And here's another one, Herbert Coronado. Oh yeah, he looks like he'd be a huge project player. But somebody to think about late in the draft. We're gonna keep that same setup going for a couple weeks now. And let's get to the 19th here. Cubs defeat the Pirates two to one. Williams sustained an injury or one of our double A players. He appears to be, uh, okay, let's put him on the 60 day. We'll auto fix those. We got another 2-1 lead here. We'll let this simulation end and... Okay, so let's look at this last week here. We started off with a 1-2 loss to the Cubs, then a 2-11 loss to Milwaukee. 6-4 against Milwaukee, 5-3. And then we have ran off five in a row. Three against the Cubs, two against Milwaukee. Looking pretty good. Do we have a win for Skeens in here? We do. We got his first win of the season. We are 26 and 21, two games out of first place. So we're still, we're hanging around. We're hanging around. The Cubs have acquired free agent Blake Snell. That's, uh, that's rough. The Mets have called up Adam, Austin Adams. All right. So those free agents are finally going. Okay. Cubs, they're going to, they're going to make a push that that's, that's rough. That is rough. All right. Let's look at the scouting here. And he jumped to 11, interesting. Okay, so we have a backup player now if Castillo is not available. Let's go back in here again, recently scouted. And Hernandez has jumped to 10 on our board, 50% of the way through. Another one here, Rivera, that has moved up our board big time. We're gonna have some decisions to make. Gonna have some decisions to make. I think we go one more week. Actually, we're short, we're on week seven already. We're gonna edit this. We're gonna go to the east for discovery and we'll scout one more week on the international there. But I think that's where we're gonna end this episode. Next episode, we'll definitely finish the month of May. Let's take a look at the stats around the league. Brendan Donovan is leading the league in batting at 392, at least the national league. Freddie Freeman with the most hits. Home runs is Schwarber. Let's see it. None of us, we're just not there. McCutcheon on base is pretty good. Slugging, let's look at awards right now. All-star voting. Let's see if we have anybody close. Keller is third in, as a starting pitcher. No one with relief there. Our closer, Bednar, is the leading the votes for the closing position. Yeah, that looks, oh, Reynolds has jumped up to first for left field. That's awesome. He's batting 311 still, 12 home runs, 38 RBIs already. Hot start for him. And we'll just kind of go through this real quick. Cruz has dropped down to 289, McCutcheon 214, Reynolds 311. Martinez has four home runs, 13 RBIs, 277. Not as awesome as we thought. He is, he is digressing more. Hayes 
It averages at 242, four home runs, 15 RBIs. Starting to see some things improve for him. Oliveras, 284, pretty stable, increasing a little bit. Telez, 247, Davis, 250, and Bay at 233. These bench players, Peguero is the one that we probably want to try to figure out how to get more time. Connor Joe has been moved to, I don't know when that happened. Why did that get swapped? Oh, we did that. We did that. Okay. Yeah, and Joe's over here starting. Okay. Now let's take a little peek before we end the episode at our AAA guys that we care about the most so far. Triolo. I almost forgot about Triolo. He is on a cold streak still. He is improving. I think it is best for Triolo to finish the year in AAA. His, his potential is a B. He could be a future player on our team for sure. But I think it's best for him to stay down unless he gets really hot and develops a lot faster. And we got Traymar Johnson here. He's batting 264. A lot of areas are improving. That's good to see. He's only 19 years old. Definitely do not see him coming up for September. I would probably lean towards Triol Triolo at this point. And Jared Jones is going through a cold streak. ERA is still at 367. He is improving slightly. He's probably a couple years out before he makes it to the majors at this point. That's where I'm going to leave you. I'm Socks Way Up. Thanks for hanging out. I will catch you on the next episode.